a very warm welcome to everyone welcome to our evening session of heritage society this uh, meeting lecture series is organized by archaeological exploration and excavation department heritage society and it is our 131st episode we welcome you sir the topic for today's uh, lecture series is megaliths or uh, astronomy on megaliths of jharkhand and it's a very important subject in the field of archaeology history and astronomy uh, so there are a lot of people who are alive in um, live on facebook youtube uh, and twitter you can uh, post your comments feedback and queries to uh, to ask questions from our expert i would like to introduce uh, sir subhashish das though he needs not uh, to be introduced but uh, i would give a brief about him so sir subhashish das is an international acclaimed author and independent researcher on prehistoric megaliths of india and the uh, state of jharkhand he has discovered several prehistoric megaliths of the tribal and has been researching on ancient monuments over two decades he is also among one of the pioneers researchers to discover historical astronomy and mathematics behind the prehistoric metha megalithics complexes he is also credited in discovering sunrise in various megaliths of punri burwadi birbir katia and murve etc he has authored several books on his researches and discoveries of megaliths which are first in the state of jharkhand and are sold all over the world he is known for his keen write, uh, writings on buddhism he is he has written many papers on national and international journals shubhashish das sir regular lecture on his discoveries in universities college and other venues in india and in several other countries across the world his sites have been visited by scholars archaeologists tourists from all over the nation and even abroad several documentaries have been made on his discoveries reputed channels have done these including nat geography today subhashish das sir research and discoveries megaliths have been incorporated into syllabus of history books of jharkhand government and Ed education board apart from this various uh, readers poets musicians and artists his book on as uh, ethnology of short stories slate to publicly uh, publish published shortly thank you sir i request you to now start your session thank you arushi that was quite an introduction i would say and before i begin i would like to <clears throat> extend my thanks and gratitude to dr divedi his wife mrs divedi azad and his work on rajgir tremendous and i would thank all them and of course i'm forgetting arushi also for introducing me to my uh, my listeners this is indeed a privilege to be here for the second time earlier i had given a talk during this lockdown period on the megaliths of jharkhand that ladies and gentlemen was an easy talk i had spoken in near about 2 hours on that but this particular topic the astronomy on the megaliths a certain megaliths of jharkhand is a very difficult topic to give a speech online 
I have no idea, honestly speaking, because this is the first time I'm doing it. How would I do this on a PowerPoint presentation? And I would want to be a brief on this as because I know this is going to be a little kind of monotonous for the listeners. But I would try to make it brief and as interesting as possible for even the common man to understand. Because this is a subject not known to many, as megaliths itself are not known to many. Now, and uh, to understand that astronomy was also included in uh, the construction of certain megalithic sites makes it a very difficult uh, proposition for many to understand how on earth at a time when people were not knowledgeable much about astronomy how would these people set up megaliths as far basic mathematics and astronomy i would explain to you that okay now i am talking of an in india when the Vedic astronomy was pretty prevalent and then came the Jain astronomy. Okay. Now, thereafter, we come out, we come with the Vedanga Jyotish hmm, of calculation known as the Siddhanta Jyotish. Hmm. The Jaina mathematicians and astronomers were amazing. Although not much, uh, we, uh, we really know about them, their books, many of them are lost, but still we have a few. And later on, we come across the Sakaldipis hmm? in the historic period, somewhere in the 5th or the 6th century CE. We have, we come with names, Baraha Meher, Aryabhatta, all these sort of people, the, uh, the uh, astronomers and the mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Now here we are talking of an astronomy that is pretty less known and even unknown. Who were these people? It's very difficult to say. Were these the Austroasiatic tribals? Could be as still now they erect megaliths. Okay. Now we will first discuss this astronomy in a certain megalithic sites. I will not talk on most of the, mega, the, the I mean, the megaliths that I have discovered. Yes, I had rather put in that most of this megalith that I will talk of. The astronomy aspect is, I have discovered this and the rest I would not talk of. Them because it could be a little, you know, it could be a little drag to discuss uh, uh, such intricacies and technicalities of these things. But I would definitely try to make it very interesting for the common man to understand how these people erected the stone as per the astronomy alignments and basic mathematics. Now, first of all, let me give you a little brief that I am not an archaeologist as normally believed to. Although, Archaeology is a part of my research. I use archaeology as a part of my research. And apart from that, I use numerous other things. I use anthropology, the folk tales, hmm? their traditions, hmm? the uh, study of mathematics, astronomy. All these come in my part, in my research. All right. Now, Now, let us begin. And for this, I would want Azad to please start the PowerPoint presentation so that I may explain to all of these people. Thank you. So the topic of today, uh, today this evening is the astronomy of the megaliths of 
Jharkhand. Now, before that, as I had talk, given a talk in my earlier uh, lecture in the same platform where I had spoken on general megaliths. So I would give a little brush up on what is a megalith. So uh, this is the basic question. And the answer to that would be, it is a term that has been coined by the fusion of two Greek words, mega, that means large, and lithos meaning stone. I presume this, most of you really do know this. And by merging the both, we get the word megalith, which means a large stone. Now, megaliths are generally understood to be associated with the dead. Okay, now I would tell you, I will give you a little brief on what megalithic burials are. The burials below the earth is known as the cyst. And there are certain burials which are above the ground below a structure of stone, which is known as dolmen. Although dolmens have been found to be memorials as well, even the Austro-Asiatic tribals, the Kolarian, Mundaris, Hoes, and the Asurs, and the Uraus of Jharkhand, they construct their Sasandiris, which originally was a burial site, but they also construct memorial dolmens as well. Now, there are certain uh, monuments which are partially below the ground and partially above. Such things are known as the dolmenoid cysts. Hmm? Now, Jharkhand is known for its pot burials. Hmm? They are, they, they, uh, uh, the dead is normally cremated and inside the ash, uh, sorry, the pot ash, Parts of the bones are normally uh, inserted and thereafter put below the ground and over uh, in its top uh, a sasandiri. That is the local term for uh, a dolmen. Okay, so that and if you go a little earlier, they may also have chamber tombs. So jharkhand sasandiris are normally chamber tombs and their burial patterns are mostly pot burials. Now, which of these tribes still make megaliths in Jharkhand? They are known as the Proto-Australoid or the Austro-Asiatic. Most of them speak the Austric speech. They are mostly Mundari, which are known as the Mundari speech. Now, they are the Mundas, the Asurs, the Hoes, and the Santals. And of course, there is another, the Kuruk, the Dravidian language, Kuruk speaking, the Urao tribe. They also make their megaliths after the death. Ramdeyal Munda Sahib, he had uh, uh, Christian the name uh, Agnea for proto australide Okay, now. Now here I'm about to tell you that megaliths are not only associated with death. They're not sepulchral precisely. They are, they are of course, there are no doubts that they are burials and associated with the death. So they are also worshipped as shrines since prehistoric times all over the world, this phenomenon is seen, okay? The worshipping of the ancestors, the, the worshipping of the departed, or at times the megalithic shrines are also associated with gods or goddesses. Now, megaliths apart from that are memorials. The one who has died, the tribals would raise commemorative stones known as the menheds in the local language in 
Jharkhand in the tribal Austric colonial speech that was known as the Birdiri or the Borudiri. Now they would also commemorate any major event for this. As for instance, say in a family, there is no girl child. Okay, and eventually a girl child is born to a woman of the house, and that spells happiness, fun, festivity, because a girl child is born. So therefore, to commemorate this event, they would put up a menhir. So commemoration, any important meeting that might have taken place, any erect a menhir. All this sort of commemoration. Many a times, megaliths, not only in Jharkhand or in India and across the world, it has been seen that they have been erected as boundary markers of villages. And in the meantime, the cattle has been seen to use these uh, uh, menhirs as their rubbing posts. They would rub their backs on this. Okay. Now, Annie. Finally, my topic that they are also raised the entire complex. Hmm? The entire complex is erected as an astronomical observat observatory to function as a calendar. Hmm? So this is a very unique concept. So my talk, therefore, would be and megaliths as astronomical observatories and calendars basing on the astronomies that I have found in that uh, in within these megaliths. So this is my basic tool uh, for my field work. Now, first of all, there is a largely a difference between a burial, a burial ground and an astronomical site. There are no doubts of it that even in astronomical site, you are bound to find burials. Why this phenomenon happens, we will discuss it a little later. But first of all, how does, how did rather the ancient megalithic folks select a site where to erect, where to set up this astronomical megalithic site. The normal understanding was that they would put up a near uh, a stone quarry where they would it would be easy for the uh, people to quarry the stones. Very good, valid point. But there are other reasons. I have been studying this particular uh, megaliths of Jharkhand, these types for over 20 years now. And in these, I have found that these people had selected these sites very selectively. They had searched and searched. Therefore, the first, you must understand that the selection or the setting of an entire megalithic complex of this type was not made at random. It is not done at random. Okay, so as such, the study uh, has revealed that they search for such places where they could locate their astronomical sites. Chances are that one can find an astronomical megalithic complex to be positioned on a raised piece of ground. It's a, they would many a times put up an entire complex the one at my back, if you can see, if I can move, this is an amazing megalithic site at the back. This entire site has been put on a raised piece of a ground. And why would you do you think they had done that? They had perhaps from a raised piece of a ground, they would have a clear view of the hills to which the entire site would be aligned, the horizons would be clear, and the sky above would be clear and unobstructed. Now, let us see. Uh, <coughs> okay, just, uh, just a minute. I would 
want to show you uh, one of the sites. Uh, oh, well, where is it now? Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, I would rather show it to you, uh, to you a little later. I will bear in mind that I will uh, have to show you this raised piece of a ground. <clears throat> All right. Now, an entire, now here, please uh, listen to me very carefully about this particular uh, aspect. This is something very, very um, interesting. And it had taken me immense uh, observation to find this out. The entire megalithic complex in such megalithic complex can be seen positioned either on the intersectional spot between the alignments of the hills or in straight line towards the horizon. You may ask me, well, sir, I have not followed what you have said. Understandable. It's quite understandable that you have not followed. I will repeat the lines once again. The entire megalithic complex will be placed either on the intersectional. Here is the intersection. Please note this. Now, here is one alignment, one hit. Hill would be here, another would be here, and the, and the other one, the third one would be here and over here. And there has to be an intersection and the megaliths would be positioned exactly at the intersectional point. So this was not easy to find, to locate and search. Such a site was not an easy for this ancient megalithic astronomers. They must have searched a lot. That is why such astronomical sites are in such lesser numbers. The burials are in hundreds and thousands, in lakhs maybe. But if we talk of astronomical side you may count them in your fingers as because such intricacies was involved so therefore i have named such a thing because and a circle the cross in a circle and what is the circle it is the horizon the landscape the circular landscape and the intersection the imaginary intersection is not visible it is only visible through the alignments. I have named it a cross. Now, I want to show you the positioning of such a megalith through an example. Please note this. The circle, I hope everybody can see the circle, the black circle. This circle is nothing but the horizon. And this is not an imaginary set up you see this is an original site and see the location of the hills first of all understand the location of the hills on the top there is it is the north there is the hill that is known as the rolla hill i have not mentioned that to the right we in the northeast we have the kesura hill and below the east there is another hill known as the Juljul Pahari. Now, to the left of south, if you can note, please note. If you are not noting it, if you are not observing, you may not understand this. That is the Bhavanwe Hill. Now, note the Bhavanwe Hill is propositioned, is there in the, in the landscape, just in opposite to the Kesura Hill. And this is known as the alignment. The case, the Kanheri Hill on the uh, northwest is just opposite the Juljul Pahari in the southeast, and this has, this is known as the alignment. And in the middle, at the intersectional point, is one of the megalith sites of the Birbir, of Birbir megalithic site. So this is not an imaginary site. This is how they placed it. I would rather not speak much on this as this could be a little monotonous for you people. Now, you 
please understand that each and every stone within the complex, the megalithic complex, can also be seen to be positioned in alignment towards the peak, towards the peaks. These, uh, these stones are absolutely in straight line, has been positioned in straight line to the peaks and the notches, the notches of the hills out there in the landscape. So, without the alignments, a megalith, a megalithic complex of such a uh, style of such form can never be made. Therefore, alignments of a megalithic site is the most important part. But why? Why was this? What was the essentiality of aligning a megalithic site towards the hill? And even towards the cardinal points, what was the reason? One of the most important reasons of their religion, which was associated with the mother goddesses, and this was the fertility cult that once carpeted the entire world, the fertility cult. Is in Hindi, this is known as the Prajanan Pant. Prajanan to deliver a baby, the most important part for a woman to deliver a baby. And that is associated with the fertility cult. And astronomy was essential for this. Megaliths all over the prehistoric world were not only created as burials of the dead but also as fertility shrines of the mother goddess cult. Now, what is a fertility cult? Today, it is associated with our mainstream religion. But earlier, it was a separate entity altogether. So, this was a time when the world was matriarchal or matrilinear. And the women were held in the highest esteem. And their pregnancy was significant and sacred. Hence, the instrument of impregnation. And what were the instrument of impregnation? The male phallus and the female vulva. And the union of both the genders were hugely revered, venerated and worshipped. The pregnant womb was very sacred of a woman. All right. So therefore, what would these such kind of pregnant bulges were compared to the bulges of hills. A pregnant woman therefore was held as goddesses. And in this, astronomy played a very significant part. Now, before I go into it, I wish to show you few landscape goddesses, giants that were worshipped. Now, here is one out there in England. This is also known as the recumbent. Recumbent means that has been laid down as a goddess. And many megaliths have been found to be aligned towards this particular recumbent hill deity. Here is another. Here is another. This is uh, the Kalanish megaliths of England are aligned to this particular hills known as the Sleeping Beauty. On the right, there are two breast-shaped hills. So, this is a a sleeping beauty. This is still known as towards which the entire megalith, Kalanish megaliths are aligned. This is the Nabatan Shire in England. This is the black massive, the recumbent goddess. Now this is in America. This is of course known as the sleeping giant. Such figures have been found all over the world. I mean, these are natural figures. Nobody has shaped them. But 
the prehistoric, the primal, primordial eyes would associate them with goddesses and giants. And it is towards these particular uh, hills also many megaliths have been found to be aligned. And this is one of the major uh, mother goddess uh, deities shapes of a hill. We will talk, this is also a mother hill. You must understand one thing, that in India, the hills are gendered. We consider hills in two forms. Pahar, that is the male, and Pahari, that is the female aspect of hills. And this particular hill is a Pahari, a female hill. So it is coming down from prehistoric times and this is known as a Juljul Pahari or the Setagara Pahari. And why it is called a Pahari, we will be looking into it very soon. And it is towards this hill, many megaliths have been found to be aligned. And how they have aligned, it is also very interesting. I will show you. And this is another hill. A conical breast-shaped hill. This is also a part of the fertility cult. And it is also towards its many prehistoric megaliths have been found in this region to be placed straight towards this. Now, without wasting much of your time, as I have decided, I will not talk long on this. I would give you a, a brief discussion as because... Uh, this is a very difficult uh, uh, session, you know, to describe, to talk on the fertility aspect. Now, let us talk on one of my biggest discoveries. I had discovered this site some two decades ago, very small, diminutive, and very insignificant looking megalithic site, but one of the most major, now completely demolished. Luckily, I have documented this. This is a very small, very unique looking megalithic site for many of us. It could be what is in it. There's hardly anything. But indeed, it's very strange looking. We have few uh, triangular shaped stones. Uh, one is recumbent. It indeed is very small. But what hides inside it? I mean, in the placing of it will startle you, will stun you. As it has to many of the visitors who have seen this site. It will stun you and I will show you how. Now look at this. It is the same site. It is the same site. I am just placing, showing you the alignments and the numberings. I have numbered them. Just look at this. Now, first of all, if you can look at, first of all, one of the stones, the recumbent, the laid down stone called D. I hope everybody is seeing that stone called D. This has this is actually a cover of a burial. Below it has to be a very, uh, very uh, prehistoric, very early burial, a sasantari perhaps. But this particular stone has been positioned in the east and the west. Okay, now. Move towards the right. There are two stones, one which I have named A, another opposite it. I have named it B. I hope you are all seeing it. Please observe them. Please observe them because until or unless you observe them, you will not understand it. And my entire lecture will become futile and you will find this boring. So therefore, if you can observe it, you will find it pretty interesting. And in between A and B, there is an imaginary spot called F. And below, uh, sorry, after that, on the same line, on the same line, there is another stone, which unfortunately I have forgotten to mark. I have marked it C. And beyond it, 
there is another imaginary spot called G. Can you see it? The point G. Now, if you join G with D, you will find the north-south axis. This is absolutely positioned in the north and south, and this is intersecting in D, which is E, uh, sorry, east and west. Now let me give you an understanding. You must know the north-south axis, scholars say, is a male entity, and the east-west is a female entity. Now, where does this north-south axis lead to and where it is coming from? The north is coming from another hill. Out there in the landscape, unfortunately, I am unable to show you. If I had graphics, if somebody would have had helped me, I could have had shown you. But unfortunately, the site exists no more, and I do not have I do not have much understandings of graphics. So this is it. Now I can show you where south goes, and here, just a minute, I will show you where south goes. Here is where south, the north south axis goes. It touches. The notch, can you see the notch? It touches exactly. It is actually the V. This is the V, the notch, which is the symbolical of the female vulva. All over the world, the upturned triangle or the V is the symbolical of the female vulva. And therefore, the passing of the north-south axis to the female vulva definitely symbolizes that particular union. Now, let us go back. I have shown you this. Now, let us come down to another. I am standing just towards the south of the stone, uh, the stone east-west. Now look at this. The A and B are just facing in the opposite direction and the medium-sized stone stands in the middle. Now if I run the north-south axis, what happens? And this is what happens. See? So, so therefore, in the, uh, in the stone, so therefore, in this particular stone D, we can see the union of the two axes, north-south and the east and west. Now, we are talking in this, uh, you know, civilized term, English term of axis. I don't think they have an understanding of this, the ancients. They could only understand the alignments. They may have had a different language for that, which we do not know. Now, I will show you one thing. You know, the D over there, the distance between FD is equal to F and C is equal to C and G. This was the understanding of their understanding of proportion. Now, now let us come down to another particular model. Over here, if you look at the back, now if you look at the back, there is a eyesore of a building, very ugly building that obstructs the view of the mountain at the back, the Mother Goddess Mountain. There I am showing the north-south axis is touching the V notch in the hill. I hope you can understand this. I hope you can see this. Okay, now let's get into this. Now, let me show you what summer solstice. Now, over here, let me give you an understanding of what summer solstice is. You see, the sun travels from the 
winter solstice spot of as the sun rises on the tropic of capricorn and which is the smallest day in the northern hemisphere from the next day the sun begins to travel towards the tropic of cancer where the sun would rise on the 20th of the 21st of june which is the longest day in the northern hemisphere you see we are known if it is even mentioned in the vedas that the sun is the biggest inseminator or impregnator it 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 pregnates or it fertilizes it fertilizes the land it fertilizes our cattle it fertilizes our women folk the sun so therefore on the 20 or the 21st of june it travels farthest up in the north hmm? so so therefore the belief was that during the summer solstice the earth would be fertile the most because these three days were the most important days and even today these three days off on around the summer solstice where many fertility festivals are celebrated in east india as one of them is the ambabuchi festival which is also celebrated of all around the summer solstice of 20 or 21st of june so therefore during this time no farming would be done only after the summer solstice occurs the three days you know the traveling the staying and the return towards the uh, winter solstice this three days so therefore this date was a very significant date so they positioned two stones in here a and b aligned to the sunrise of the day and if they would do it and if the sun rises exactly and and, and the same alignment they would know that it is a summer solstice day as because as because it was they did not have any script neither they had any almanacs neither they had any panchangs so their calendars were these now look at this this small stone a is pointing towards the winter solstice sunrise amazingly accurately points towards the winter solstice sunrise of the 22nd and the 23rd of december such amazing understanding and wisdom and knowledge of astronomy because this transits of sun they knew like in the palm of their hands neither such an um, what would i say that's a stunning uh, positioning would not have been feasible this is a small uh, uh, crowd of uh, people the small young fellows who have joined me to view the sunrise unfortunately this site exists no more i have tried many you in many a ways to save this but nothing could be done the site is completely demolished so therefore demolishing obliterating erasing a very significant part a source of our country's history now let us get down to another site this is the pankri barwadi i discovered the uh, uh, astronomy of the site some more than 20 years ago this is the amazing site 
perhaps this megalithic site is perhaps one of the most eminent megalithic sites uh, all over the world till about uh, seven or eight years ago the site was visited by numerous um, scholars and archaeologists and archaeoastronomers and tourists from all over the world now they don't do it it's in the verge of complete extinction but before that let me show you i had shown you i had told you rather that many of this megalithic sites this astronomical sites was placed the in a raised and an elevated piece of ground now here is it can you not see it can you not see it the megaliths are positioned on an elevated piece of ground i do not know whether this elevation was created or it was a natural phenomenon now here is it the megalithic site you can still see the entire megalithic complex positioned in a raised piece of land now let us get into first of all into the fertility part of it the bunkri barwadi megalithic complex can be seen positioned between two breast shaped hills of a and b breast being also a significant part of fertility because it feeds the children the infants the newborn the bare breasts were very significant part and the entire complex can be seen positioned can you see how amazingly they had done this a very rare uh, feat indeed and a very rare photograph also i presume you understand this now here is the layout of the megaliths uh, there is nothing much to see this uh, nothing much in it to see until or unless i mark all right first of all the smaller stone i have marked it with a the second stone with b and the distance one with m1 m2 and m3 now the stone a you can see has been positioned in an absolute north south direction now see this that is the small a it is pointing towards the bulge in the hill which is to the due north and to do such a feat without the assistance of a compass is unique i presume you still under that understand this now going back to the particular uh, the, the previous uh, photograph here is the positioning the north south of it and you see how it has been positioned the left line it has been positioned in absolute straight linear mode the linear mode touches begins from the middle of a then uh, the, the middle of a the small stone that is the meridian stone and the axis touches the left of b the left of c1 and it enters the uh, in between m1 and m2 all right so now let us see this i have come now let us return to this particular one of my most favorite photographs of this particular site this is the east west position they did not place it randomly they chose it the true east and west position now i am over there working with the compass this is a very unique this is a very unique alignment of megaliths that has been seen in and around has uh, jharkhand many of these menhirs over here like the side i am in i'm on rather faces the winter solstice sunrise it faces the winter solstice sunrise i am behind it if you see the two people over there that faces the summer solstice sunset that is the unique part of the world 
if we are looking at the winter solstice sunrise to our back would be the summer solstice sunset and this understanding these people had it thousands and thousands of years ago and look at this particular stones they face they are oriented between the two sunrises and sunsets of the winter solstice and the summer solstice now now if i can and, and I, I wish to show you one thing uh, just a moment please uh, now just a moment please now yeah now if you can look to the right of the stone a where is this particular uh, axis leading to now i'm going to show you where is this particular uh, axis leading to it is leading towards a hill there is no doubt of it but i'm not showing you the hill i'm showing you to where it touches inside or within the site now it touches one stone to the right this stone i have named ssl yani this is the summer solstice stone stand behind it and that is aligned towards the summer solstice sunrise of 20 or 21 june that means if you stand at um, uh, at the foot of that recumbent stone of ssl you can see the sunrise on 20 or 21st june here is the one this is the sunrise you can see this is the positioning of the two stones so accurately done that a v window gets formed the v window and if you stand behind that pointer stone which i just showed you you on uh, uh, summer solstice mornings you can see the sun rising exactly to in between these two particular stones all right here is here is now look at this this of course i understand is very complex and kind of boring also no it's not that boring please concentrate please observe and i have show you because i have no other way of telling it to you how can i tell you i do not have any graphics this is the only way that i can convey to you how amazingly these stones were positioned now look at the right side look at the right side now first of all you can see the north south axis i hope you can see that spot that stone a and it is moving towards that ssl and if you stand behind it that red line on the right you can see it and i am i have written on that towards summer solstice sunrise that i have just shown you now come down to the farthest left towards your left we have the brown uh, oh I, 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 just a moment i forgot to tell you another thing now that particular sunrise please go to the uh, horizon can you see the horizon running down from the summer solstice it is over there on the 20 or the 21st june that's the ssl you can see the sun rise through the v from behind that particular hill am i able to make you understand i do not know now from the next day either if the, the summer solstice is on 20th of june then from the next day 21st of june or say if the summer solstice is on the 21st from the next day the sun would begin to travel towards the winter solstice towards the uh, uh, tropic of capricorn over here you can see it in the powerpoint please note on the farthest right in the landscape i have written 
22 stroke 23rd december that is the sunrise of the winter solstice and from where you can can you see it you can see it you can see if we go to the farthest left you can see the brown colored the brown colored line that is going absolutely towards the winter solstice sunrise and i will show you how it looks this is the winter solstice sunrise from that particular point rising from behind that hill can you see the sun it's very faint it's because it's foggy it's mist of this fog all around i see so so therefore and there uh, i am working on it that i am working on that particular day okay now sh we shall return uh, we shall return to that particular photograph i know it's getting a bit a bit heavy for you people but please understand i have no other way to explain to you the intricacies these people constructed this astronomy now let us come down to the point e and if you stand there no no i forgot i forgot i forgot another one there was another sunrise i forgot now if you stand at the left of a if you stand at the left of a and stare towards m1 and m2 between the two men hairs you can see this amazing sunrise see the alignment a and n is the a stone the north it is an absolute straight line this you can see on 27th of february uh yes 27th of february the sun rises i exactly do not know what date is this must have been some important day for the ancient somewhere 3000 years ago i'm not sure of this but this alignment is indeed very important it seems as they had aligned the sunrise now let us come down back to the same particular now you can see the point e on the north south axis if you stand there and face m1 and m2 you can see the sunrise from the due east because we have a wrong understanding the sun rises from the east every day no it does not the sun does not rise from the east every day this is what i showed you the sun travels from the winter solstice of 22 23 december towards the 21st 20, 2021st june of summer solstice while going towards this it crosses the vernal equinox point of 20 21st of uh, march and its return towards the winter solstice it will cross the mark of 22 23 september that is the autumnal equinox and they observed it from the point e if you place your compass you will find that this is absolutely perfect it is perfect east towards those two men hairs but how was this particular how was this particular uh, point found i mean you many people would say ah come on this is not possible these are the ones i had shown you now now here is one i will show you how these measurements were made now this is the um, i just showed you this this is the a stone and we have the north south axis and we are standing at e and equinox point and we are facing towards the east and here is from it we see this particular amazing sunrise the sun rises from the east exactly due east from between these two men is how stunning this is the stunning sunrise through the v of m1 and m2 men is from the due east on equinox mornings it had taken me two decades to unreveal this astronomy hidden inside this site the sun rises reveal the accuracy of the knowledge of the ancient megalithic astronomers now 
but you may ask me but sir there is no stone out there there is no stone in e how do we know where to stand to gaze the equinox sunrise ah here is a very good point now there they had done a, a very unusual miracle and i will show you that now if you measure ab1 you will find that is about 93 inches which is equal to ae that means the point of equinox from the right side of a is equal to the point if you stand from a towards b this is this is the kind of measurements this is a kind of astronomy these people had and this is the crowd that visit this is the only place in the country where you can see no only megalithic site in the country where people gather to see the equinox sunrises and here i am explaining to the visiting crowd how the functioning of the pankri barwadi megalithic site the equinoxes and the solstices to the guests that are arrived from all over they come from far and off not any more of course why that i will tell you a little later all right now now let us let's hurry it up and i'm showing you another site of katia murbe this is a megalithics of katia murbe you may say what is that in it this is a this is a megalithic site of the tribals erected due to uh, uh, as a memory or burial maybe fine enough but the moment you get to understand you measure and you bring out your your uh, measuring tapes and uh, your uh, compasses things begin to change things really begin to change is ruined today this megalithic complex is completely if not completely most of it is ruined but whatever remains of this ancient jewel of an astronomical complex i call this a jewel a uh, complex suggest how knowledgeable the ancient megalithic astronomers were this is amazing the entire megalithic complex has been positioned exactly at the center of the intersection i hope you remember the cross in a circle i hope you remember that i showed you the alignment of the hills and it is at the at the intersectional points of these hills and these megaliths are found to be positioned pankri barwadi was also like that but i did not show you the cross in a circle there but i will show you the cross in a circle of katia murbe and you will be amazed now uh, just a moment the entire megalithic uh, complex of katia murbe has been positioned exactly at the center of the intersection of the cardinal points cardinal points north south east west and the hills in the intersection of the hills and the horizon while the entire site faces the due east <laughs> this is a very tricky it faces the due east but then it of course is aligned it is positioned exactly at the middle intersectional point here is the cross in a circle please please <laughs> please take a note of this unless you understand this now i'll repeat i have no other way to explain it to you had it been a tv then i could have shown it to you uh, uh, with graphics and all then things would have been more interesting but i have no other way this circle as i have told you i earlier is nothing but the circular horizon all right now to the east on the top is the east there is a range of hill known as the dasi hill the entire side faces the dasi hill 
to the west unfortunately there is no hill all right now come down to the cardinal point of the right the south there we have the dhangara hill and to the left is the north there we have the chandram pahadi and very surprisingly to the north east we have the tumba patra pahadi and towards the south east we have the extended range of the dasi pahadi and towards the southwest we have the kohvarwa pahadi and would you believe you ought to see to believe this that the tumba patra and sorry i forgot this is the intersection the cross in a circle and at the intersection point these people this ancient position have positioned the entire megalithic complex of katia murbe and furthermore if you look at the tumba patra pahadi that is facing i mean that is aligned towards the summer solstice sunrise and towards the right is towards the southeast is the extended range of the dasi hill which is facing towards or rather aligned or oriented towards the winter solstice sunrise and below towards the southwest we have the uh, kohvarwa pahadi and that is aligned towards the winter solstice sunset isn't this amazing just imagine how much these people had to labor to find such a site it was very difficult for these people to search a site and this must have taken them years years and on to search to search such a site as a result such sites are so limited in number you can count them in your fingers the stones are positioned in parallel rows now this is different most of which are ruined today the parallel rows are ruined i'm going to show you i'm going to show you the parallel rows but the rows are still vaguely visible now one set of the now please understand this you can read this and i'm going to read it to you understand this one set of the parallel rows are oriented between the <coughs> winter solstice sunrises and the 22nd of december of the and the summer solstice sunsets of 20 and 21st now if you can look at this here you are this is what i am trying to tell you one row is facing the winter solstice sunrise and the opposite is towards the summer solstice sunset now just a minute here is here is one of these alignments that reveals the parallel rows most of it is demolished gone taken away carted away by the villagers but this is what that remains can you see and on the uh, to a, a, a towards the front towards the front you can see these alignments are towards the peak of the dasi hills and that points towards the winter solstice sunrise all of these parallel rows can you see the parallel rows they are pointing towards the winter solstice sunrise of 22 and the 23rd december and behind it you can i have uh, also marked it with arrows that is aligned towards the summer solstice sunset okay now this appears on the 20 or the 21st june that i have told you a little earlier now few other parallel rows created by the linear positioning of the stones many of them are now ruined or oriented between the summer solstice sunrise and the winter solstice sunset i have shown you winter solstice sunrise and the summer solstice sunrise sunset now i'll show you the opposite how these people did the opposite this is the opposite can you see the parallel rows most of them are broken but many still exist these alignments are towards 
you can see it is pointing toward the summer solstice sunrise and which hill is that i think it was tungabhadra hill and to the front you can see uh, what what hill was that kohavarwa pahadi hmm? uh, it is aligned towards the winter solstice sunset of the 22 or the 23rd december but it is toward the kohavarwa such amazing i will show you a few more of this can you see this this is one of this the stones are aligned towards the kohavarwa pahadi can you see it still exists after thousands of years this alignment still exists here is another the parallel row it still exists it is pointing all the rows are three stones are positioned side by side in parallel to one another of course this photos were taken 4 to 5 years ago i do not know whether this stone still exist or not and this is my team who has worked with me on katia murbe i wish to name them or to the uh, to my right is my more than 20 years uh what would i say i would i cannot call him i would call him my comrade of 25 years alok bharti or alok rana and there is another one jitendra tiwari these people have been with me for so long so each now i am reaching at the end of my talk so i am going to hurry it now <clears throat> now you please understand i have not shown you all i have shown you only three sites i don't wish to show you, show you more because this could be a little heavy for you all but i can tell you this that each of this archaeoastronomical megalithic complexes at least the ones of jharkhand have been laid out with distinct and different styles all the three megaliths i showed you they are of different and distinct style but they have adhered to the basic idea of alignment of the stones that is the the basic idea alignment towards the equinoxes and the two solstices such megalithic sites though are in very less in number as compared to the sepulchral or the memorial megaliths are indeed a great great source of india's prehistory that suggests that the possible tribal megalithic astronomers and mathematicians who created this marvelous megalithic observatories though were an unknown set of people have indeed <coughs> contributed in the evolution of india's history i'm going to show you few other uh, uh, astronomical sites of the subcontinent this is of pakistan asota amazing this is still known as the sun temple this is still known this is an amazing observatory this is also a burj hall i this site also has revealed no sepulchral remains no whatsoever no burials whatsoever this is anam sagar of karnataka look at this the positioning the parallel rows this look at this perhaps this is the only one of those uh, photographs one of the few photographs of the origin original site this is another uh, telangana of nilurallu um, amazing site aligned towards the solstices and equinoxal sunrises the yeah, astronomical now i'm going to show you the present condition of this uh, uh, megalithic complexes that i talked of chano or rola pankri barwadi and katia murbe Cham -ch chano is completely demolished i have informed everyone from archaeological survey of india to the ministers to the uh, uh, the local uh, <coughs> authorities administrative nobody took any interest they have no interest in uh, protecting it seems our uh, megalithic sites so this is the condition of uh, chano of the site that i spoke to you first look at this all the stones have been turned up and tumbled down nothing it doesn't exist anymore the major astronomical site of chano is completely demolished today 
This is the condition of Pankri Barwadi, the most major uh, astronomical sign, perhaps one of the most major sites of the country, most eminent. Its alignments already gone due to uh, coal mining and all. The, all the alignments are gone. See, and the site has become a parking lot of these Hiva trucks, all cutting coals from these people. Gone. Who cares for all this? Can you see the megaliths on the site, uh, on the right? And uh, within a few days, this site will also be gone. And while the most of the Katia Murve now gone, the remaining part of the ancient megaliths too awaits destruction. But I am lucky to have at least documented these sites for the future generation, for they would know that such unknown set of people with such knowledge of mathematics and astronomy did once exist and who had once created stunning observatories as these that no more exist in person today. So this is, I have documented this in one of my last books. You can, if you wish to read this, you can read this. This site includes few more of these such uh, astronomical sites. It is available online. It is, <coughs> excuse me, it is available in major bookstores of the country. If you don't, if you do not get that, if you do wish to purchase it, you can purchase it from Amazon, Flipkart, etc. The book is called The Archaeoastronomy of a Few Megalithic Sites of Jharkhand and it is published by Niyogi Books of New Delhi. Megaliths are one of the most significant relics of ancient India. Without knowing or understanding them and their unknown makers, the proper understanding of ancient India is just not feasible. So next time, if you've ever visit a megalithic site, <coughs> bow reverently at it, while here remain silent to show respect towards the prehistoric monuments and their unknown makers. And their amazing knowledge of mathematics and astronomy. So bye bye to you all. That would be all for today. I hope I have been able to make you understand the astronomy <coughs> of the megaliths of Chakra. Thank you and good night. Is there any question that needs to be asked? Is there any question that needs to be asked? You may ask me. So there's a question by Vishwarupi Joshi. Yes. Uh, if the mega stones were buried in ground, then due to weathering of land soil, these could have been unburied naturally in time and change positions. Is it so, sir? Oh, no, no. It, they don't change position. They don't change position. It may get <coughs> eroded. That's something different. Next, yes, please. Yes, sir. Is there any? So while traveling through Meghalaya and South Plateaus at night, the clarity of sky can be easily experienced. Yes, it can be. So anything else, uh, Shreya? Or shall we call it a good night for now? So it's Ayushi. So I would uh, like to tell you my learning. So it was actually a very great session. So and uh, like there were a few points which were so uh, like the key points which were so attractive and many people do not know about it as you told that we actually group uh, even the mountains, the pahars. We group it into you know the male and females and the also the party. yes sir. and yes, also yes. the Yes, sir. And the megaliths are just not doomstones. They are also very significant. Uh, and you said about the motherhood totem. So these points are very, very relevant and people should know about it. It's, it's, it was very, very informative, sir. So Thank the session was very amazing. 
Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, I would take. So I would like to thank everyone who joined the session, and also including the large Heritage Society family, including our annual members, our uh, Virasat Mitras, and also uh, the ones who are alive on um, YouTube and our Twitter page. And also, I would like to thank the chairman, the director general, and secretary of Heritage Society. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. I would wish the same. to dr duvedi mrs pande uh, azad my listeners and to you also shreya thank you uh, ayushi sir ayushi <coughs> thank you to you all and johar to you all also and good night thank you good night all right. bye bye for now <coughs>